Well, salutations, fellow vidiots. Welcome back to yet another episode of that full moon madness, baby. Today we have for you some margaritas, some marijuana, and a motherfucking full moon mail call, courtesy of our boys over at fullmoondirect.com, where you can buy movies, merch, and much, much more. It's a beautiful spring day here in eastern Oregon. Got the patio door opened up here, sucking some fresh air into this musty movie dungeon. I think this is going to go pretty smooth. We only got about nine items to show you guys today. Uh, we're going to have two featured trailers, and we are also going to start something new. We're in, during these intermission swoop specials, we will announce our next wave of reviews. I want to start this tradition so that we've got it going when we eventually hit the point where I don't always have full moon pickups to show you between each wave. Not only will this give us like an extra segment we can throw out there and an excuse to talk about the movies in advance, but it will also give you guys advance warning of what's coming so that you have a chance to get out there, find the movies, and watch them before the reviews go down. Hopefully it will also help you formulate an idea of which ones you'd like to get in on full-length discussions for. So I think it's a good tradition to start full credit to the internet series Hot Ones, because this is ripped off directly from them. Cheers. So as I mentioned, we have nine items total, only eight of which I actually ordered, one of which is the full moon, like, free movie of the month. I will talk more about that when we get to it, but the first eight of these are ones that I actually had on my wish list and intentionally ordered. I was gearing up for an absolutely fucking massive full moon order, the biggest one yet. It's actually on its way as we speak. I got the shipping confirmation this morning. Easily as big as our Valentine's Day haul in terms of like individual movies. And then when it comes to memorabilia, oh boy, is there a sexy fucking stack of shit that we're gonna be looking at in there. But today we're focusing on this mini haul. I just kind of grabbed it up with one of my extra trip checks from my job on account of like delivering extra Amazon parcels and stuff like that. I had like a cool, I think it was uh, like 80 bucks sitting around. So I went ahead and I sunk that into some full moon shit because why not? Pretty evenly balanced between classic stuff and modern stuff. We're going to look at that classic shit first. And the first of those titles is Slave Girls from Beyond Infinity, the digitally remastered edition. This sounds like it's basically the most dangerous game played out in space with like prison chicks and aliens and whatnot. Can't go wrong there. Definitely going to be included in our second wave of reviews. More on that later. The next one here is one that I got solely on the recommendation of one Chris Seaver from LBP and Warlock Home Video. He has a channel on YouTube called It Crept from the 80s. That's how I discovered him. That's kind of a weird story. Like I typed in full moon documentary, I think. And one of the things that came up was a discussion segment with him and his friend, I believe it was Bobby Heckman. And then I was watching that, and I watched a couple of his other videos, and it came up that he made movies himself. And it turns out he's like the director of Terror at Blood Fart Lake, and Stoinky Beach, and Filthy McNasty, and several like low-budget B-movies that I had been aware of based on reputation and title alone. Since discovering him because of Full Moon, I've checked out several of his movies and been, you know, frequently checking in on his live streams. Really enjoy the channel, really enjoy the dude. We have similar sense of humor in a lot of ways. And I think that this movie is no exception to that. It's basically just an old school boner comedy that has a sci-fi slant to it. This teacher shows up at like this high school or whatever, and it turns out she's actually an alien that wants to do experiments on like human reproduction or something like that. So she gives this super nerdy kid like this head tentacle that makes him irresistible to basically anybody, you know, the women especially, but I think several dudes as well. And I'm just super looking forward to checking it out. Going to be our featured trailer for this like first half of the stack here, so look forward to that as well. Now, when it comes to Full Moon, they they have several subsidiaries because Charlie Band is like obsessed with renaming the company itself and then starting sub brands to distribute other types of things. Now, where Wizard is basically just a lot of stuff that could be Full Moon movies distributed as Wizard movies, uh, Surrender Cinema is actually worthy of being like separated into its own category because that's like their soft core sort of nudie flicks and i believe this movie here forbidden zone alien abduction is one of those uh, basic gist of it is this alien presence or creatures going around having his way with a bunch of women in their sleep and then they all end up sharing these experiences with each other 
in like a group session or whatever. They think it's just dreams, but it turns out that they've been diddled by an alien or something like that. From what I know of their softcore stuff, it's basically just hardcore porn, but they don't show any penetration or actual contact via the genitals. So it should be pretty uncomfortable watching in mixed company. I imagine I'll be watching it alone. And then closing out our classic segment of this stack, we have my first addition to the Full Moon Grindhouse collection. This is an old school Empire flick here that we actually are going to be taking a look at the reimagining of in our second stack. But that is Necropolis. The basic gist of it is this witch who's like doing these crazy witch rituals is fucking executed but she puts up like this curse that allows her to come back like 300 years later in the 80s as like this motorcycle riding fucking punk rock chick with like superpowers you know she's going around looking for this ring i watched a lot of it i was pretty drunk i'm gonna give it a proper watch here in the future and pair it with that reimagining back to back so that i can get the full effect but there it is for our classic stack not too bad happy with every single one of them uh, especially looking forward to dr alien close runner-up would be slave girls then obviously necropolis forbidden zone i got mostly for completionist purposes but also i am kind of curious to to see what it's all about you know i'm gonna try to bang out one of those surrender cinema sort of softcore flicks every now and again just so that i got them coming in adding them to the collection because if i'm gonna do this seriously i need to just try to bang out their entire library and that stuff is part of it. What can you do? I'm not going to sit here and act ashamed about watching porn, softcore, or otherwise. I'm down. In any case, you guys are going to check out that trailer for Dr. Alien, and we'll see you back here with that modern stack in just a Meet Wesley. He's such a good boy. He's a model student. What's the matter, retard? Can't you talk? But when it comes to girls... Have you even talked to her? He's got a lot to learn. Studies have shown that guys get much further with girls after they talk. It's time he got his education. I'm Miss Zenobia, the new biology teacher. Holy mother of God! He has come to teach. Sexual reproduction. Any volunteers? Me, 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 me. You see, I'm researching new forms of vitamins. And Wesley is the perfect subject. Now drop your pen. Your milk or something? He's an experiment out of control. She gave me some kind of shot. But I seem to be having some after effects. What kind of effects? He's growing out of his head. Gross. Is it working? Oh, yeah, it's working. Now, the school brain has been chosen for a greater purpose. Has become the most popular student body. Teach me the meaning of the word pleasure. If it's me. Doctors from another world. Let me get this straight. You guys are aliens from another planet. Have oh. made him the most wanted man oh. on Earth. I'm being chased by aliens. Ah! Radical. Far out. What the hell is this? You're a man and I'm a woman. I'm with you so far. Good work, son. Ah! The Earth boy stole the last bottle of the formula. Donahue, Edie Williams, and Billy Jacoby. Dr. Alien. Alright, so as promised, we got that reimagining of Necropolis, and that is Necropolis Legion. This is one of the Deadly Ten, which is a Project Full Moon launched like right unfortunately before the corona kicked off where they were trying to do 10 movies in a year i think the time frame was set as like halloween 2019 to halloween 2020 and they were going to just have all of them released inside of that year to their credit they have gotten four of them out despite the fucking pandemic and they seem to have been very safe in doing it while not sacrificing the quality of any of the projects and I know some of you guys might be thinking, like, modern full moon quality? Are those words that even belong in the same sentence? Well, yes, some of it is pretty fucking quality stuff. I can't vouch for this one because I've not seen it yet. But our next title, which is actually the first movie that came out in the Deadly Ten Wave, is a great example of what I'm talking about. 
But Necropolis Legion is just a reimagining in the very truest, you know, sense of the word. They're not trying to do like an actual full on spot for spot remake for it at all. A lot of the elements have been changed, though a lot of them are similar. So it's more of a companion piece to the original movie, as opposed to like a modern stand-in for it. And from what little I've seen of it from the trailer and like the drunk 30 minutes of it that I watched, it looks like a good time. Lots of good splatter in there, lots of that good kinky special effects nonsense that's in the first Necropolis movie. I think that people are really going to enjoy it, myself included, and I'm looking forward to giving it a proper watch here in the near future. Our next title, in terms of that Deadly 10 shit, is the first one, as I mentioned, and that is Ouija's Halloween Night. Now, this came out either on Halloween or just during the Halloween season of 2019, right before the pandemic. It definitely shows in the movie. It's like a wild-ass party movie, huge crowds of people involved in it. Vegas Strip action going on, all that stuff. I think a couple of months later we got photos of the Vegas Strip practically deserted. I was going to get these on Blu-ray, but I'm going completionist, like I've mentioned, and I think with the Deadly Ten I'm going to do that multiple times over just to have them, you know. Uh, like Ouija's here, I could have gotten the Blu-ray, but it wouldn't have been this special, like, retro VHS rental style edition, you know. So for collecting purposes, it was worth grabbing up. Uh, their Deadly 10 movies are $9.95 a piece as opposed to their regular DVDs, which are $7.95. And I don't mind that. You know, that excess money just goes towards more Deadly 10 stuff. Super happy with it. I have watched this sober in its entirety and fucking loved it. I'm going to save most of my comments for the actual review. But what I will say now is don't let the like overall weed gimmick turn you off to it because it's barely a thing in the finished movie, honestly. This is basically Ghoulies Go to Vegas, only with different creatures, and for some reason they slapped an extra weed leaf on things here or there, but it's never really even talked about or mentioned. There is like a fun stoner element to the party side of the movie, but that's in like every horror movie party flick, you know? There's always like the stoners or, or somebody that makes a weed joke or something like that. I mean, literally, they could have just called this Ghoulies Go to Vegas and not changed anything about the movie. And it would have still been just as awesome. Absolutely fucking hilarious. Packed full of a ton of crazy cameos. Uh, references to other Full Moon stuff. It's everything you would want from a modern full moon movie. They just let Charlie Band's like recent obsession with weed creep its way into the marketing of the thing. And I think that was a bad idea because more people would have given it a chance if it was just called Ouija's but spelled differently. They could have just called it Ouija's Halloween Night without the weed shit and people would have been like, oh, that's, whoa, they're going back to like the Ghoulie style of shit because that's totally what it is. There's even fucking like cast members from Ghoulies walking around in the party that are like prominently featured in the film. I don't know. Chill out with the fucking weed, Charlie. I get down with the ganja too, but we don't gotta talk about it every fucking five minutes. Either way, once again though, super stoked to have it. Absolutely the perfect movie to kick off the Deadly Ten. I mean, if they can keep up the level of quality that they've got going on in these two and Familian Cosmic Crush, I'm absolutely stoked for the rest of them. I know Blade Iron Cross, which is one of them, didn't get the best reviews, but yeah, those are probably from people that aren't, you know, attuned to the full moon rhythm there. I'm sure it's not as good as other Puppet Master movies, but what can you expect from a standalone Puppet Master movie? We are also getting a Dr. Death one, so hopefully that will be as good or better. Either way, check that out as well on Full Moon Streaming. I'm not sure if these ones are available on Tubi. They very well might be, and I'll probably put it in subtitles on the screen if they are, so that you guys that aren't subscribed can check those out as well with minimal ads. Closing out our modern stack here, we have two more items as far as like my personal purchases, and then our you know Full Moon Movie of the Month. Uh, first up, though, we got Ooga Booga. This was one that I knew I had to have the moment that I saw him in the first Evil Bong movie. He's just whacking off furiously in the fucking film, and he is absolutely adorable, so I knew that I had to have it. Also, it kind of reminds me of this story that my grandpa used to read me as a kid from this book of short stories that I still have. If we eventually review this in the near future, or whenever we do, I'll pull that short story book out and give you guys like a look at it and an overview of it. But it was basically about this African doll that goes on this crazy like killing rampage, you know? And it's the same sort of thing. I think he was like a Zuni warrior doll 
So he had like the loincloth, I think, and the dagger and the spear and everything. And it was the same sort of a deal, you know. And basically what's going on in this is, you know, this African-American fella is at this corner store and this dude, like the shopkeep, gets shot during a robbery. And he's trying to assist them when the cops show up. They unfortunately assume that he did it. One of them fucking, you know, pops a cap in his ass and he gets resurrected in this doll to take his fucking revenge. And it looks like a good time. You got Stacy Keach, Karen Black up in there. Uh, this time he's 16 inches with an attitude. Uh, so he's got a good three inches on Doll Man there. I'm still pretty sure Brick Bardo could smoke his ass, but why would he? He seems like a chill dude. Yeah, Ooga Booga looks like one of those modern full moon gems that I am definitely looking forward to checking out. It's a shame that Ouija's had to be in this stack, because I'd love to show you guys the trailer for this right now, but our trailer for this stack just has to be Ouija's. Now, I promised you guys a little while back that, against my better judgment, I would eventually buy Witch House 3 Demon Fire to complete the trilogy of Witch House movies so that I can eventually review them. So I figured I'd go ahead and get that out of the way while I was doing like this odds and ends order here. And I'm glad that I did. The second Witch House movie looks more promising than the first. This one probably looks like the worst out of all of them. But the first one, based on the cover art in the description, looked like the best one, and it was kinda ass. So, I'm thinking with Witch House there might be this weird thing going on where the cover art doesn't necessarily, you know, express the movie and its quality because Full Moon had long since given up on that at that point. Witch House is kind of an anomaly in terms of sort of later Full Moon movies that have rad cover art because most of them fucking don't. They just don't bother with it anymore. Uh, but it's just, you know, it's a shame that they don't. This, this looks more like softcore porn than fucking Alien Forbidden Zone does. But I'm willing to give it a shot. And I have to anyway for the sake of completionism, whether they all blow or not. I know part two has Andrew Prine in it, so I'm looking forward to that. I'm sure he's advertised, but he's in there for like two fucking minutes or something like that. But hopefully that two minutes is a good two minutes, you know? I'm not trying to just bag on modern full moon stuff, but it's, it's of a different quality. And some of the stuff that's in that transitional period, like Witch House or like something like The Dead Hate the Living, don't necessarily fit in one or the other or they're just bad. They were figuring it out. I think for a lot of those, they were still trying to do like the larger scale stuff from the classic Full Moon era. They just didn't have the means to execute it, you know? And in certain cases, like Witch House, they just got fucking lazy. We're done talking about Witch House. In any case, our free movie of the month. And that is The Vault, one of Full Moon's urban horror movies. I forget exactly the name of the urban, like, sub-label. I think it's just called Urban. But it was their movies that they did uh, with predominantly African-American casts. I think sometimes with some African-American, like, creators and writers and stuff. So just sort of one example of Full Moon sort of being progressive before progressive was cool. If you've noticed, if you've been following this series for a while, there are several things Full Moon was, like, ahead of the curve on but they don't really get credit for it because they're full moon. The urban horror label, I think, is one of them. Some of that stuff you could look at as accidentally problematic now, but I don't think you should. Keep that fucking shit out of, like, you know, horror and old school B-movies, because nobody was doing most of this stuff with any malicious intent, and they were down to include anybody who wanted to be involved. But, yeah, that was the full moon. Free movie of the month was The Vault. Uh, it looks like it's just about some kids that accidentally unleashed some ancient evil or whatever. Uh, looks like it's got some good gore in there, some decent effects. Also some shitty, like, visual effects or, you know, computer effects, whatever you want to call them. Either way, not a bad odds and ends haul here. You know, I'm happy with everything that we included. We got a good balance of, like, additions to the classic library, like I said, and additions to the modern library. Our next haul is just going to be absolutely fucking insane, so look forward to that. I just, I, I'm not trying to overhype it. I think, honestly, I will have kind of underhyped it by the time we get there. Because it's fucking wild, man. I got that Pappy Joe stimmy stim up in the fucking bank account, so <laughs> I spared no expense. Let's just put it that way. Either way, right now, you guys are going to check out the trailer for Ouija's, and we will be back with a very brief segment where we will announce our Wave 3 reviews. So stay tuned. <laughs> Can you guys believe 
believe we got this entire hotel for the whole night. This is going to be the greatest Halloween party in the history of Halloween parties. The party was supposed to start by now. You have to believe in miracles. That's your miracle. Alright, so now that we got all that shit out of the way, all that's left to do is close this bitch out by announcing our Wave 3 reviews. Now I balanced these evenly between sort of early proto full moon flicks released on the Urban Classics sub-label of Empire back in the day, and like, you know, classic shit from the peak 90s era of full moon. We're gonna stagger it back and forth between the two. First up, we got that Slave Girls from Beyond Infinity, and we got some of that Beast Man sex up in Meridian. We got an evil genie flick in a bowling alley with sorority babes and the slime ball bowl Rama. And we're getting down with some of that giant robot action in Robot Wars. Getting jiggy with some giant rubber suit monster shit with Creepazoids. And then closing it out with a lot of people's favorite full moon movie of all time. It's definitely pretty high on the list for me and that is Stuart Gordon's Castle Freak. Definitely our first Stuart Gordon flick to show up on the series, but it will not be our last. And that's it guys, that's wave three right there. So get on it, start watching those on Tubi or full moon streaming or I think Amazon Prime whatever your preferred streaming service is, and we will see you back here real soon with that first review. I have been Mosley, you've been a bunch of sexy beasts, and this has been yet another episode of that full moon madness, baby.